for the uh, meeting of the McKenna County Zoning Board of Appeals. This is application number 2022-19, pen number 1830-400-416. The address of the property is 13520 Marengo Road, Huntley, Illinois. The property consists of approximately 5.71 acres and is located northeast of Marengo Road, roughly 1,500 feet north of the intersection of Marengo Road and Main Street in Grafton Township. Jessica, the applicants are Jessica Rodarte and Raymond Bernal. Raymond Bernal Perez. The request is for a conditional use permit to allow for a reception facility on the subject property and various and variations to reduce side setback from 30 feet to 10 feet along the west property line and 10 feet to 9 feet along the east lot line. At this time, I'd like to introduce the board. Charles Elridge, Richmond Township, Vicki. Robert Cozen, Algonquin Township. Kurt Schnabel, Schnabel, Riley Township. Donald Smolinski, Grafton Township. David Stone, McHenry Township. Thomas Jers, Coral Township. Jessica Beverly, Tor Township. We bring that up to, so that we, on the record we uh, meet the requirement of the state that you can only have one board member per township. Okay, so um, anyone who's going to speak at this hearing needs to be sworn in. Uh, so if, if you're going to add anything, you need to be sworn in too, sir. <laughs> and I don't think any, is anyone else? The other, the rest of you are just observed. One lady has her hand up. Okay. Do you I solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is it will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, answer, I will. I will. I will. Procedure um, generally, if we have a lot of people who are here to observe, we give a detailed explanation of where, where we go. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to hear from you. The board's going to ask questions. The staff may ask questions, and um, at some point we'll terminate the hearing, and then we'll go to a uh, decision-type meeting. Um, so that's basically the, the way that it works. So we, we start with you. you. You're the one who has the burden of proving that what you're planning is is acceptable to the county. Um, so you yes, have a written to the record for the, the posting and so forth. Was oh, done. yeah, thank you. Just make the record right. Publish a certificate of publication from a newspaper dated November 18, 2022, and thereby meets ordinance requirements. Affidavit of posting was signed. The date posted was November 23, 2022, and thereby meets ordinance requirements. Affidavit of mailing was signed, and date mailed was November 15th. 2022 and thereby meets the ordinance requirements. The survey has been checked against the petition, legal notice, public and publication in the newspaper, and all three match. Filing fees have been paid. Endangered species consultation was not required for this petition. 
McKinney County Soil and Water Conservation District report has been received. So now we're, now we're back to you. <laughs> so you want to tell us what your plans are and uh, describe to the best of your ability what you're, what, how it's all going to fit together. Okay, well first I want to take the time to introduce ourselves. So my name is Jessica Lodarte. Keep your microphone by your mouth. I said I want to take this moment to introduce ourselves. My name is Jessica Lodarte and this is my husband Ramon Bernal. Um, we have two children, Lily and Nico. They're full-time students at McHenry County College and we've been residents of McHenry County for 15 years. Uh, we currently own Infinite Construction Group, which would be the company that would facilitate um, any building requirements required to um, be approved for this conditional use permit. Um, our hobbies are farming, all things farmhouse, and leisure travel. We're also leisure travelers. So today we're um, seeking a conditional use permit and a change of land use. Um, the purpose of this conditional use permit is to operate an outdoor venue with a reception facility in the first property in Huntley, formerly owned by Grafton Township founder. Our reception facility will be exposed to the outdoors with viewing of our farm animals. The type of events we plan on hosting are weddings, quinceaneras, anniversaries, and well, plus more, depending on what the public wants to host there. Um, the operating hours that we are requesting are Friday 4.30 to, uh, to 12, Saturday 2.30 to 1, and Sunday 2.30 to 11. Um, we would be considered a seasonal venue as we would only host events the last two weekends of May through the last weekend of October. The events would be for 200 guests, max 250, including venue staff and vendors. The proposed venue is Rancho Camino Real at Whittemore Homestead 1841. Um, at Whittemore Homestead 1841, because this is a McHenry County uh, landmark, so we do appreciate that and we want to keep it in the name. So just a little background on when we first bought the property from the Bohar family, we honestly didn't realize it was a McHenry County historical landmark till the day of the closing. Bohar handed a Northwest Herald article clipping and village of Huntley 2002 calendar to my husband. And due to purchase acquisitions and how this property was purchased, I was not at the closing, but the hus my husband came back home very <coughs> excited about the documents that Bohar had handed him. And I kept this little article with me for this entire time. We've been here for nine years because Bohart always said that it was a great place for a family picnic. It's honestly a really cute property. Um, it, it has a lot of outdoor space and just like having all the red barns, American style uh, red barns, it really gives it a vibe of like historical. And um, also this property, like I said, is the first property in Huntley. Um, so I feel like having a venue here, it's a really nice way to recognize what it is. Um, this is just a little calendar that he also handed us of the, of the uh, Grafton founder, Prescott Whittemore. Uh, it just takes him into consideration and recognizes who he is. He also uh, named the Grafton um, Township after the city he came from. Um, so with our venue, we want to be able to host these weddings with all of our animals. Since we've had animals this entire time, our dream has always been to own a farm. We didn't buy this farm to have a venue. We bought this farm to live here. And little by little, things started changing as um, we would host events. The major event that we hosted were when we recognized that this farm was supposed to be a venue, was, it is supposed to be a venue because of where it's located, was my daughter's quince. We worked really hard on that event. And um, you can go to that next slide. And um, we had so much fun with it. 
and a lot of our friends and family started asking us to host events at our farm. So being the host that we are and we've always been, we 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 started hosting events for like all of our family and friends and got a little um, I guess taste to it and I really enjoy it and my well, my family enjoys it as well so we would want to continue doing it but in the right manner and that's why we're here today seeking a conditional use uh, permit. Did um, you get served with the RFS? I'm sorry. Did the county serve you with a request for service? Yeah, they did. All right. Mm -hmm. Good, and that later. Okay. Go ahead. Can you take me to the site plan? Okay. Um, so this is the actual farm, and um, what we're attempting to do is enlarge the uh, gravel drive to 24 feet. Uh, to be able to have an in and out access for the ambulance and fire department and any large vehicles if vendors are coming in with larger trucks or buses. Um, we also are proposing an addition of 3,150 square feet, uh, which would include a um, bar, a um, toilet room, catering kitchen, no cooking on site, storage room, janitorial uh, closet, a fire sprinkler uh, room, mechanical utility room, and a um, outdoor event space. We are also proposing a parking lot, a grabbing parking lot that will um, be able to hold at least 80 plus parking spaces and an area for the bus and truck parking. It would be gravel. Uh, it wouldn't be a paved area with the exception of the um, handicapped parking space with walkways that are four foot wide, sufficient enough for a handicap if somebody was to be in a wheelchair. Um, what else? We would also propose a new six foot tall privacy fence um, for privacy uh, from our neighbors, our side neighbors. And can you move forward into the septic tank and field? Uh, we propose two different septic tanks and fields. One is for the primary residents, which we can talk about that a little bit later. And the other one is for the venue itself. Um, we are attempting to do what well, we would have to do a minimum of four uh, restrooms for the women and four restrooms for the men. So based on talk with the septic design engineer, there's enough space in that area to do it. Um, that's pretty much it when it comes to that. A future playground in the back of the barn as well for the kids to keep them out of the roadways. And we would still keep our, la uh, our dairy barn for our animals, so there wouldn't be any changes there. Or the middle barn, um, the barn that we would be using for the receptions, that would obviously have um, some work to be done to comply with uh, county regulations and codes and building codes. You guys have yeah. any questions? On yeah, we do have questions, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, starting with Mr. Curies. Before question, I don't, don't really have a lot of questions. I'm your neighbor, although we've never met. I live a couple miles west of you down the road. Oh. Um, I've known this property since I've been out here in McHenry County, which is over 50 years. The Whittemores were in-laws of Thomas Stillwell Huntley, the founder of the town. Yes. I can show you where they're buried. Oh, uh, please Bohards, do so one day. <laughs> the Bohards were good friends. Delwyn, <laughs> Delwyn and Fran, they're passed on, but then their son uh, Clark and Sandy lived in there, and then and then you bought the property. I've been by your, I go by it like eight times a day. You know, and I've, I've gone by it at night when you have receptions, and you've got the lights on the strings and stuff, and it's, it's beautiful. I mean, it's like I want to stop in and say, "Hey, I'm your neighbor. Where's the beer?" Uh, <laughs> Please do so. <laughs> I plan on doing that. Uh, I've never. I've been by it 
dozens of times when it's in use. I've never seen a parking snarl that your, your guests don't park in the ditch or the yard. You've got control of the parking. Um, it never looks overcrowded. It looks welcoming. Um, that uh, the limestone house, the story on that is when it was built in the 1840s, that limestone was hauled by wagon to Huntley from a limestone pit in Belvedere. From Garden Prairie. Yeah. And we'll, so that's how far the limestone was hauled to build that house. The fact that it's still standing is amazing. And I'd like, is there a plaque on that house? Yes, there is. Yeah, I thought there was. Yes. I've never seen the plaque. It's a, it's a landmark. It's a Missouri yeah. County well, landmark. For 13 years, I lived on the Dikey Farm, mm -hmm. which is right at the edge of the Huntley city limits. It's the driveway back into Stingray Bay Aquatic Center. Mm -hmm. So I lived there for 13 years. Delvin Bohart was my across the road neighbor. Oh, okay. He raised seven kids. One of them's a minister in Marengo. But Clark, the youngest one, lived in that house. Mm -hmm. um, I like what you're doing. You got this all professionally drawn. On your application, the right-hand column of the page where it says attorney is blank. Can you guys believe that? There's no attorney in the room? <laughs> there is. Retired. <laughs> I like that. For what you're doing, you don't need one. Thank you. Um, like I said, I don't have a bunch of questions. I have hardly any questions. I'm familiar with it. I've seen it. I'd like to come. And, and walk through it someday, but I've seen it in use. I think you're doing a good job. Uh, I see you got to get compliant with the health department, the washrooms, the in and out, double wide driveway for parking and stuff. It it all makes sense. I like to do this with the place where I live. It's, kids are grown. We got all this room and just two of us. I got nobody to party with. Well, there's too many parties. Maybe we can do it at your yeah. place. And it, it's seasonal. You say you're going to be May to October? Yes, it's seasonal. Weekends only? Yeah, weekends um, only. You, it, it's obvious you've put a lot of thought into it. This uh, Luco company, I, I'm in the real estate business, so I know you're a surveyor. Mm -hmm. but you've, you've hired professional people. Yes. I think you're in good hands. Yes. And I can understand you want to get compliant. Um, uh, that, that's really my, my only question. I, I like that you're preserving the place, <coughs> that you're not making a whole lot of drastic changes. You're gonna no, keep, we want to keep You're going to keep livestock on the property. Yes, we are. Um, more power to you. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm done. <laughs> I don't have any questions. This is a very thorough application. Mr. Snow. Uh, yes, good afternoon. I just have a couple of uh, generic questions I feel that, I, for the record, I'd like to clear up here. When we look at our packet, and staff is welcome to jump into if they have a comment on this, we have a page four which appears to show your latest proposed event space edition. That's one of the main features here in the septic areas and so forth. And it also says existing historic residents, no work. Then on the following page, I've got a page five. Perhaps this red lettering might mean something to you. I'm going to assume that this is more of a preliminary version because that event space edition wasn't shown here in the beer garden is shown where the event space is now shown. Well, do, do we have a site plan review that is show one? Part of the record? Let's make it part of the record. Okay, so page four is the most recent submittal that is the official site plan that uh, you will be working from. Mm -hmm. um, so we disregard page five. So page five was added because they are planning on making some um, revisions to the house, which is one of the variances that they are seeking as well as the conditional use for the event. What is the it's the variance from the uh, uh, 
line to the uh, correct from the uh, side lot line to the is house. There, is there construction uh, going to change how far the property is from the? Uh, so that's why they're seeking the variance. So you want to add on to the house. Um, and how much closer to the property line are they making? So they're actually only building up. We're, we're, not, not, we're not getting any closer to the line. Okay, yeah, we're building up. Okay, yeah. Thank you for that clarification. So just okay. to clarify, the footprint of the house is not going to change. Correct. All right, Correct. and if we're going to put this in the record, I would like to add into the record that what we're using, page four, is the record document does not show the proposed addition and interior remodel. I don't okay. know if that is significant or not. But okay. It, it should be noted for anyone that may read this, I feel, in the future. So Let's do we want it. to say that page four and page five combined make the official site plan? That makes some amount of sense. I just have uh, one other question. If I recall your presentation, it said that the new event space would have outdoor viewing to the outdoor spaces and so forth that I misinterpret something there because I'm just asking the big main event venue we have right now and then the large one you're going to add on to that could you tell me what kind of construction that is is that going to be like open frame roof metal barn side metal, metal barn yeah so it's not actually open you know any it's, big big windows no it's open to the outdoors so like the door the doors um, it has, yeah, yeah, they're like um, about 14 feet tall, about 20 feet wide. Those remain open throughout the events. Okay, I understand yes. that. I have nothing else at this time. Thank yeah. you. And there's three of those on the building, but we will comply with a sprinkler system that the Huntley Fire Department is requiring. Let's mark that. Let me have that. So the site plan review is dated. Do you have a clean copy of what's the present day? This, for the record, I'm showing Dave page five which is the uh, red lettering of proposed addition and interior remodel where we determine the addition will not consist of a larger house footprint, but a second story apparently in certain areas. So that should not affect side yard setbacks and the like. Um, but that's not shown on page four, which is considered to be our most and best up-to-date plan for this petition. So the two, as staff mentioned earlier, do need to be combined into one factual instrument, if you will. So where's the first page? That's it. It's page four. I don't see a. It might be this exhibit number one. Page four is be marked by the chairman exhibit number one. Page four only. Correct. May I suggest we make page five and it's an, as a revised addendum. Exhibit, exhibit number one. One A. And to clarify, exhibit one A will reflect the proposed addition and interior remodel of the house only. Mr. Elbridge. Should be in here. 
Okay. Uh, and uh, did the staff uh, plan review review the uh, uh, their various proposals uh, in terms of the number of toilets and so forth? Uh, and uh, <coughs> um, what I'm trying to get at is, should we put on the record? Uh, and add as a condition uh, the contents of their narrative, which goes through the uh, uh, their proposals as to various things and uh, both construction and uh, the approval standards for conditional use. Okay. So to answer the first part of the question, uh, have they has Zach Platt uh, taken a look at the number of toilets and those types of details? Uh, yes, that was part of their overall review. That's how the health department determined uh, whether the amount of uh, area for the septic would be suitable. Um, so yes, they have reviewed that and they have signed off on that. Um, in terms of the details in the narrative, the staff plan was given the narrative. Um, I can't say that they read everything or not. I can't see what people read or not. Uh, but they were made aware of all the aspects that are in the narrative. Um, we've had three meetings uh, with the Rodarte's at Staff Platt, so all those details have been, uh, I think, thoroughly discussed at this point. You can propose a, a condition, if you'd like, at the time we get to that yes. point. Yes, uh, I intend to. Uh, you have in your narrative uh, given responses to all of the standards for uh, a zoning variation and uh, uh, conditional use. Uh, are you uh, willing to agree uh, for the record that uh, those uh, answers are true and correct? Yes. Uh, and. Uh, are you uh, prepared to have a, uh, a condition limiting your hours to the hours you've proposed uh, and the number of people present to be uh, those that you've suggested would be your maximum? Yes. Uh, that's all I have right now. Okay. Mr. Smolinski. Thank you. Thanks for that. I'll just take up. Okay. There we go. No. <laughs> no, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a couple questions. Uh, I noticed that you had said that uh, the parking is uh, uh, 80 spaces. Is that correct? 80 plus. I think it's like 87 right now so far. Okay. The question that I have, do you consider that to be adequate when you could have up to 250 people there? Well, I feel like it, I mean, if we need more, we can put more, but um, usually the, like, my, uh, the events are going to be for 200. I'm, I, I just have a cushion of 250 for vendors and, like, um, people working the event. Sometimes the vendors come, like, say, like a catering company, they can bring about 20 staff members, and they'll come in, like, a big, um, van or truck so um, that would take up one space and we we did add the um, the parking spaces for the bus and truck parking and the towards the back of the parking lot um, but if necessary if, if we need more I mean there's space to do it so you said it's not going to be paved and marked it's just going to be gravel yes Okay, how are the spaces going to be delineated? Uh, we have parking staff that guides the vehicles and tells them where to park, and they're out there from the beginning of the event um, all the way till the event is over. And I presume there's space, grass space, that would be available for overflow if that would occur? They can park on grass somewhere. Uh, yeah, possibly in the back, uh, depending wherever the proposed uh, stormwater retention area would be. 
Um, I don't know exactly if, if the engineer wants to do like a retention basin or a, like a small pond, but I mean, there's sufficient area in the back of the property. Okay. We're very fortunate to have that. I presume for these events that you would have uh, bands. Would they be inside or outside? Uh, both, but mostly inside the barn. Outdoors, it would just be like if they have like some sort of pianist, like during a ceremony, or if they have a mariachi during a ceremony, uh, but not the entire time. It, it would be indoors. Yeah, because I, I would think that if they set up outside, you know, is there considerations that you provided for uh, for noise? I mean, if we have to consider noise to do this, and we will. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, also, you did say that uh, your neighbors are here. I presume then that you've spoken to them about this, uh, and are they supportive? Well, are you guys supportive? Uh, <laughs> absolutely, 100% opposed. Okay. 150% opposed. Okay. Anything else? I'm the neighbor across the street. Uh, I'm supportive. So we got kind of a mixed. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll hear from them in the uh, in the future here in this hearing. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bozen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm trying to pin this down. And forgive me. I'm way to the east. So when I get a petition from this area, I'm thinking I can see uh, Iowa further. <laughs> First of all, um, am I clear that there is no use definition or standard for a reception facility in the UDO ordinance? Is that? So there is a definition, uh, but there is no use standards. So um, would you give us some, can, I wasn't able to locate it and I apologize, but what is um, so the don't or I'm sorry the definition for a reception facility is a business that provides the hosting and rental services of a banquet hall or similar facility for private events including but not limited to wedding receptions holiday parties and fundraisers with food and beverages that are prepared on site or by a caterer and served to invited guests during intermittent dates and hours of operation a reception facility may have overnight guest rooms for the use of persons attending events a reception facility is not operated as a restaurant with regular hours of operation nor as a hotel offering overnight accommodations to persons other than persons attending events. So a, a beer garden would be considered an appropriate use under that definition? Yes, we've, we've had other reception facilities with that as an, access, an allowable accessory use. Right. Your uh, application in terms of number of people, start out at 200, and then it goes to 300, and it stops somewhere at 250. What would be the likely number of guests that you would be? 200. Is your committed number? Yeah, 200 is for guests. It's just that after speaking to the architect, he just stated that we need to have a cushion for um, like vendors and like employees and just have you know like obviously they'll do like two more bed, uh, restrooms one more for the women and one more for the men your application describes the areas to the east and west in fact it goes on to say that you were surrounded by McHenry County Conservation District yet the exhibit prepared uh, on page 14 of 27 which we receive only shows the MCC uh, property to the east and Am I misreading? I welcome being standing corrected. Yes, only to the east. So you are not surrounded on all sides? Well, on the side of the barn we are, because the barn faces um, all of McHenry County Conservation. Like our primary home faces um, to the left, it's all um, residential, and then 
to the right, it's all uh, McHenry County Conservation. Right. So the, just to be clear, then the Exhibit 1A is now named. The addition that you're speaking to, that is uh, to the west, that is not near the McHenry County Conservation District. If you want to refresh your memory, that was Exhibit 1A. That was our page 5 of 27. And I was just wanted to clarify who is the neighbor to that proposed addition. There's no neighbors. Right, but the property owner is not the McHenry County Conservation District. Next door to the addition? Um, to the house. To the oh, house. To the, oh, no, yeah, we have neighbors there. Okay. Yeah. That concludes my questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I ask one more question? You may. Uh, uh, hi. The house, is that your primary residence? Yes, it is. And is it used in the uh, entertainment or uh, rec uh, the, uh, is it used for the uh, parties and other events you host at all? No, it's not. We live there. So uh, the addition really is an addition to a private home, not to uh, uh, an event venue. Is that correct? There's two additions. Well, the, the addition to the house, the, yeah, the second for, story to the Yeah, house. that's for our, our personal use. Okay. And, but we're asking for the variance because um, the application, I didn't want to do two separate applications. No, I understand. But, but that, that particular building uh, and anything you're adding on to it is for your personal use. Yes. It is not uh, for invited guests to do uh, uh, your reception facility. Yeah, no, it's not. It's for us. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you have any objection to having mm -hmm. some limitation put on the number of participants at your events? Like the 200 number? I like the 200 number because I feel like the barn is uh, large enough to host that. So obviously, we want to be able to utilize the barn, you know, to its full potential. See, what I'm, what I'm thinking is you've got two areas for your events. If you fill both areas and it starts to rain, what do you got? Okay, can you repeat that? You fill up the, both buildings. That can house people for the events, and then it starts to rain. Oh no! I mean, the barn is large enough to have a max of 20 tables and a max of 250 chairs if needed. And plus, we're adding that proposed uh, 3,150 square feet, so that would make it um, 8,150 square feet total venue. That's large enough to host 200 guests. Okay. Any further questions from the board? Questions from staff? No questions at this time. Um, now we'll have comments from the uh, guests here. Questions. Questions. Any questions. Questions. Any questions, any questions. questions. Any questions from, the staff, from the staff? Did you already say that he had? He has no questions. I said I had no questions. Yeah. But the public, public may have questions. questions or comments from the public. Ma'am, come on up, grab the microphone. And let's turn that on for you. State your name and address, please. How do I turn this on? It's on. It's on. Um, okay, my name is Susan Andrews. I live in the adjacent property at 13403 Marengo Road in Huntley. Um, we is have this the property to the west? Correct, it is. And if you look at the map, you can see the small amount of frontage that we own. Um, so they own a lot of frontage. But the, the property is, is kind of odd shaped, you know, there if you look at it um, to the west. But in any case, we've owned our property for over 24 years. Um, and over the course of the nine years of the Ms. Brunell and um, her husband um, owning this property, we have experienced increasing um, lack of respect for our privacy, for our peace and quiet, um, just for everything that we moved and bought that property for. Um, and I'm sorry for being emotional, but this has been an extraordinarily difficult um, last nine years living with them as neighbors. And this proposal, 
I mean, just further destroys our way of life. I have music vibrating my house until they say one in the morning, it goes later. They've had neighbors call the police, they accuse me, I do not call the police. Um, because the noise level is so high and the music is so late in our whole house. You cannot sleep in our house with what they currently are doing. Um, we have no privacy. They've told us for years they're gonna put up a fence. It has not yet occurred. They have no respect for our property line. They allow their dogs to run loose on our property um, despite repeated requests. It's just, I know this isn't about their dogs, but it is an issue of their lack of respect for us as neighbors. I, I just, I can't even express enough how distressing this is to me that they would be allowed to build this facility um, and further destroy our, our peace and quiet, our privacy, the traffic. Um, it, it, it's just outrageous. Like I can't even wrap my brains around it, honestly. Um, and then, you know, as far as the variance and the proposal, if you look at where they want to put the new septic field, it's right, at, right on the property line. That's where my well is. Um, if you look at where they want to put the, the new retention pond and their parking, that's going to destroy our hay field, where how we get our, you know, our tractors and our haying done and that field that we, that we use to hay. Um, if you want to talk about the noise, now they're going to have an outdoor I mean, it's loud enough with where they have their music now. I mean, and they're, now they're going to ask for an outdoor area. I, I don't know. I, I just like I can't even begin to express how horrible the situation is. It is just beyond, beyond horrible living next to you because they've already started having these parties. They've already started having these functions. You know, apart from ever being zoned or having approval. They've been having these these functions for I don't even know several years now, and I can't I can't use my own deck or backyard on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday night because we can't hear hear our family talk over their music. Um, I so I don't even know what to say. It, so definitely do not against the whole idea of a reception hall definitely against allowing them to have music that late, which they already exceed those hours regularly. No matter how many times we ask, they exceed those hours and have music into all hours of the night to where our family cannot sleep. Um, and, and coming cr closer to the property line, I mean, you can see how close they are to the property line already. I, I, I just, please do not let them come closer to our property line. Please do not let them have music into those hours where our family can't sleep. I mean, I don't know what to say. I don't even think I could sell my house at this point, S saying that this facility is so close and selling it in good faith and saying you're gonna, you're gonna have a, you know, a quiet country home to come live in. No, you're not. I don't, I don't know what other questions you have for me. I mean, it's well, how many people live in this area where? Where is your, your house? Is just to the west? Correct. That's that's our house. That funny little shape with the that's kind of like a triangle where it's got the small amount of frontage and then it goes back. So our there, house is quite there, on the... Are there, are there other neighbors? Across the street and then on the back side of Coin Station. And I don't really know who's calling the police on them because it's not me, but clearly I have talked to people on Coin Station. They can hear that. I'm going to just want to know how many people are, are inhabited there. My house has four, has five people. And our house is right on the property. You don't have an estimate of how many more there are? There is a, there is a cornfield for, to the next west of our property is a cornfield. And behind us is a cornfield. So we are the neighbors. There are neighbors across the street. Apparently he, he is okay with it. Um, so the, the noise is basically on our property. <laughs> it's us. Staff, uh, don't we have a, stand, a standard decibel level? So that has been removed from the uh, Unified Development Code, our ordinance. Um, that is a function for the Sheriff's uh, Department to handle at this point. Yeah, which is why the police get calls, <laughs> because it's, it, it's crazy. Is there a noise ordinance in the county at the present time? Yes. Like I said, that's one that is a force under the police power. Correct. Right. 
board have any questions? Mr. Schnabel. I, I just have one comment relative to the police powers. The issue was brought up before that there was at least one RFS in the past. Can you give us any insight, detail on that? So the request for service for the audience members is what RFS stands for. Okay. So uh, there was one filed in January of this year. That's the only one on record for this particular site. And it was for operating the um, reception facility without a conditional use permit. As you are well aware, I know of another case um, in a nearby township. Um, I believe, just for the audience members' knowledge, you are entitled to apply for a number of outdoor parties per year as a private residence, correct? Could correct. you illuminate us as to the detail on that, please? Okay. So uh, there are temporary use permits that um, can be applied for. It's up to six, three. Uh, three per calendar year for a reception facility such as this. Um, there have been none that have been applied for from this property. But yet every weekend, every uh, weekend there are we, events we going have on. To, we have to speak in order because this is a court semi-judicial proceeding and we need to keep the record straight, I'm sure. Uh, the question that I had was, from your experience being on staff, I'm sure you have received complaints from people that have tried to get the McHenry uh, County Sheriff to perform some enforcement, and perhaps you even got feedback from the Sheriff's Department as to how possible that is even to do in the real world, as opposed to not having that, for example, decibel requirement in effect any longer how does that get enforced and does it get enforced and can it realistically be enforced in your opinion? Okay, so like I said, this now in the police powers section, so the sheriff's office is the one that will be handling that. Um, how they determine compliance will be up to them and the state's attorney's office. I have a question. That's all I have for now, thanks. I have a question for uh, Jessica. Um, could you fashion a condition for the sound connected to a time? I mean, do these events go till? Uh, is there a time in your contract with your clients? I mean, I I want to host. Like I gave you guys the time, which were. Um, Friday 4.30 to 12, uh, Saturday 2.30 to 1, and uh, Sunday 2.30 to 11. But, I mean, we can enclose the building and insulate it. Uh, there's type of constructions that you can do for sound, um, for sound ordinance. So, um, I mean, if it, if, if it can't be a, an outdoor venue, then, um, we would just use the barn and enclose it and not allow any music outdoors, only inside the barn. I mean, there's things that we can do uh, to work with the noise. Okay. And we are, um, on my site plan, I do have that six foot fence, that privacy fence that's adjacent to her property. Um, and I mean, I feel like this is a this is good for our community. It's good. It's just it's good for um, you know like tourism and and re uh, restaurant consumption, businesses and <clears throat> hotels. I mean, there's other benefits to this. It's not just a a monetary um, gain for us. I mean, it's also historic uh, preservation. We're using. We have all these really big buildings. We gotta utilize utilize them for something. I think it's really neat to be able to convert uh, these barns, you know, for the purpose of uh, a venue where the community can use it. Well, 
Well, I'm just suggesting that there may be a compromise that you two could work out. Because it seems like you were expecting her to be in support of your petition. So you must think you're on, you're on good terms with her. No, and, I know. We, I mean, your, we, we've had concern? issues. Just, just a minute. Is that your only concern in the sound? I mean, the sound is probably number one, but it's also it's also just the, the privacy and I don't I don't trust them to abide by this because in the past um, they have made numerous promises about respecting our privacy and our property line that have not come to fruition over nine years. Can I speak to this? Um, we did plant trees. I spent like five grand on planting trees to have that privacy and the trees died on us. So now I'm attempting to put up a six foot tall privacy fence, which I needed permits to do it. You need a permit to be able to put up a privacy fence. Mm -hmm. and, and I have it on here on the site plan. You know, it's just things have evolved over time. And I apologize if you think we've been disrespectful, but um, you know, like I'm attempting to do whatever I can to give you the privacy. Um, right here, we have all these trees that cover this whole parking lot, so you're not even gonna have a viewing of this. I could also put more trees on this side. This doesn't mean that it's gonna take up all this land out here. It's just gonna be a retention basin or a possibly a pond. You know, it's, it's not gonna, I mean, I promise that we're gonna work out, work this differently, and it's on the record, you know, like, you know, I'm attempting to do this. I think it would be something really good for the whole community. Like, not it's not just for our monetary gain, like I, I just said it right now. I mean, I have like, you know, I've had, my kids went to the Huntley High School. Um, my son just graduated. Like it was, you know, yeah, they had a lot of gatherings with their um, friends. I've had a lot of gathering, gatherings with my family um, we do have a, a large following of people, and um, like I said, I, when we moved here, it was to live on a farm and have the animals and do all that fun stuff. Um, but it's come to a point where I feel like, I mean, we have the perfect location to do this. Uh, it's a very neat property, and uh, preserving it hasn't been that easy. It's, it's a lot of, of funding and um, hosting these events has, you know, it, it, it's going to help us like be able to like preserve the property as a whole. Can I, oh, you have a question? Sure, can I, Mr. Cozen would like to go first and then I have a question. Oh, Mr. Cozen, no, we don't, we don't let him go first. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm uh, just following up to the um, hours. Uh, given that there is this uh, existing uh, reception facilities, are the hours proposed and purportedly this is directed to staff similar to those other uh, reception facilities in the county? To the best of my knowledge, yes. And, and then um, to the applicant, um, um, I applaud because once again I'm learning a, a lot about the uh, western history of uh, McHenry County. Do you have uh, submitted a business plan or something for the restoration of the historic home yeah. as part of your application? And, and to whom have you submitted that to? To Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kim. I'm sorry. Kim. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Was that from the historical society? Yeah, like I already, um, I mean, I went through with, I had a meeting with the Historical Society and I submitted the plans to them to take a look at it. They were supportive about it. And I already submitted my plans to the county for a building, but I, I stopped the process when I found out that in order to do this, I had, was gonna have to do all of this. So I rather focus on, um, doing this first, finishing this project, and then doing the house. 
So just to summarize, so there is a plan for the restoration yes. and for this historic building as plaque by McHenry County yes. and already identified in detail by one of our members. Yes, uh, we already made the investment and, and done all that with the our ALA architects. Which are from Crystal Lake, so I yes. thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I might, um, this is Jessica Beverly. I have a question for staff. On the existing septic field that's being abandoned and the new proposed septic tank, the, uh, the neighbors mentioned that her well is right there. The health department has evaluated these plans and determined that this is all fine and will work out even though the well is right there. So uh, details will be worked out during the permitting process, but yes, they have done a analysis and they, um, believe that it will be that our standards will be met with the permitting process okay thank you okay uh and right. then uh i was just informed that the plaque uh that uh jessica has been referring to uh has not been from the county historical society but from the mchenry county historical society Side. It's not the it's not the McHenry County Historic Preservation Commission. Gotcha. It's the McHenry County Historical Society. Yes. Correct. Not the commission. Correct. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, sure. names are so similar. <laughs> okay, uh, sir. Do you do you have anything else to add at this point? I guess I do have a question regarding the variance. So I have. Okay. Kind of yeah. Questions. This point. I'm sorry. We're kind of beyond the questions okay. coming up before. But go ahead. And I'm just trying to corral this back into a normal meeting. Sorry. Go ahead. I've never been to a meeting. <laughs> You're fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I, there seems to be a contradiction between the application for a variance versus the verbal communication I heard saying they're not trying to come closer to the property line. Because that's what I heard. The testimony we received was that the, uh, they will not come closer to the property line on your side of the property. That they're planning on putting a second floor mm -hmm. on the existing footprint. Right. So but the it variance. Not, it, uh, it is a variance because uh, uh, we would not allow uh, uh, reconstruction of something uh, it is non conforming because it is too close right now uh, under our current standards. It probably wasn't when it was built. You're getting into real muddy waters. Yeah, deep. Mm -hmm. You are correct. Okay. Anything else? Yes, sir, did you want to? Yes. You want to grab the microphone? Yeah. You want to sit down? <laughs> I'm good. Um, <laughs> my name is Joel Rafalski. I live at 13515 Marengo Road across the street from this property. Um, I am in support of what they're doing. Um, I agree with Tom. It is beautiful property. It, it, it's awesome. And I think they're taking it in the right direction. My concerns only would be that, and I agree with her, the, the noise, the bands can be loud. So I think that needs to be addressed. Um, the lights, the, the current setup, I'm basically talking about the current setup. Sometimes the lights, when they have the, the, the lights going on inside the barn, they're flashing at my house, you know, so just an annoyance, but whatever. But I do, I do think that what they have is, a, is really special and, and can be, can work without a problem. Um, I also would be concerned about um, just the the road and, and widening it or trying to get cars in and out of that area. If you're familiar with that road, people fly down that road and it's curved in such a way that um, when I exit well, my property. About, 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 uh, Marengo. Marengo Road. Okay. okay, sorry. So Marengo Road is just curved in such a way that um, it can be hazardous exiting you know, even for myself getting out. Actually, from their side, it's easier because the way the road is curved, you can see down each road because they're on the uh, convex, I forget which side it would be, but 
I'm on the inside of the curve, so it's difficult to see the cars coming. Um, will that be addressed as far as like widening that for a turn lane or anything of that nature? That would just be something I was thinking about. And my recommendation would be, if this all gets implemented, implemented, how you address, can we lower the speed limit coming to this area? Uh, I'm going to head shaking, so I don't know how that, that works. But those would just be my thoughts, you know. But I, I see what they have, and, and they are very good people. They're very good business people. I could recognize uh, this woman's concerns because I think she would be impacted differently than I am. Um, but um, overall, I, I, I am in support. But I just want to be on the record for that. Um, I just would be concerned a little bit about the cars kind of exiting and getting back in. So, well, can, can I make a comment? Yeah, sure. Oh. Yeah, but keep it short, <laughs> 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 yeah. Does this work? I couldn't resist. Hello. Perfect. I don't think it works. <laughs> oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> I'm all about sound. I love sound. <laughs> um, getting the county to reduce the speed limit is, is not going to happen. Um, but a suggestion to you guys, if you put up a temporary sign during your event to say, event in progress, and then tomorrow morning you're going to take the sign down. Mm -hmm. But a little, you know, tent sign, like, kind of like people do for garage sales, yard sales, for a two, three, four, five hour event, event in progress or something like that. But get the county to do it, they're not going to do it for you. The speed limit is what the speed limit is. Did you buy a Schweider property? Yeah. yeah. I bought pumpkins from him. Oh, thank you. <laughs> As my son's doing. Yeah. 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 It's a nice property yeah. there. Um. But I agree with you. You're on the inside of the curve, and they're on the outside of the curve. But I see on their plan, instead of a one lane driveway in and out, they want to make it 24 feet and have an out lane and an in lane. Right. Uh, you know. Well, I'm sorry. If, if the staff approves it, they're compliant. Okay. And, and so when I have like, it, it's not a big deal, but I start thinking about stuff as I'm sitting here because I see the widening of the road and the parking in the back, and then it would be like, why well, have 80 cars, headlights beaming right into my in my house? And maybe I could put some trees up or something. We'll figure it out, you know? So, I mean, there's things I got to think about too, but yeah. again, I just, they're good. And then okay. I was in the tunnel business in Hobby for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Made a lot of money on your road. <laughs> yeah. You know, we don't recognize fly-by ideas. We don't recognize fly-by ideas that just come in your head. Let me just suggest this for, for what it's worth. Do you think you two could go out in the hallway and in 10 minutes come to an agreement about how late at night you're going to run events with bands and stuff like that? And then, and at least get part of this agreed upon in terms of your what, what's bothering you. I've never done this before, but it seems like it's logical. Can I talk? Sure. Please? Um, we have hired a, a traffic engineer, which he's he's going to be doing like a study. So. I mean, they're the professionals, and they would know if this is going to be a burden on Marengo Road. I mean, we can say that there's going to be a lot of traffic on the road, but, I mean, let's just leave it to the professionals. Well, it sounds like you have a lot more to do yet. Do you want to postpone this hearing, continue it for two months? So, no. may I interject at this point? Yeah. Thank you. Um, in terms of the traffic that's been brought up here, um, in order for the Rodarques to apply for the permit from McDot, they basically need to have the use established in terms of just knowing that this use can go here. Then the process is that they apply for their various permits not being one of them, stormwater being another, uh, building permits, there's the whole litany of different permits that are applied for after the use is agreed to. Um, so the issue of the traffic study at this point, um, 
would be difficult to achieve, um, not knowing that the use is approved. But am I not correct that prior to issuing a permit, McDot will make a determination as to whether anything like turn lanes are required, whether sight lines are appropriate. To so they, that will be their evaluation, and that will be uh, part of the um, continuing process after the uh, use is established. So yes. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. But we were told that there is no standard. So essentially at this point, if we establish the limit of 200 cars, that would be the standard that McDot would use. And so the issue that the chair, if I may try to delve into that perspective, is seeking is how late will the music go as opposed to asking us how late we think the music can go. And I'm coming from a perspective in my own little community that had a very popular beer garden that was established during COVID and when its permit was expired, needed to come to a resolution on how late it should go. And I think that is the only question I see as I've been sitting here, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, well, we can just proceed to the next step I mean, to our vote or whatever. I mean, I'm willing to go out there and talk to them. You, you want to? I do. Okay, but we're going to limit you to 10 minutes. Sure. It's a short period of time when you have something to do. Okay. But we're not going to sit here saying, we're almost there, we're almost there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Recess. Yeah, we're going to recess for 10 minutes. Okay. Certainly make a measure of men's room. Yes, I gotta sign in. <laughs> Diet Pepsi is a good diuretic.
Okay, the parties comply with the 10 minute rule and uh, was there anything that came from that 10 minutes? Yeah, you're okay. okay. So, uh, things that were discussed was primarily the uh, hours. Um, taking a previous um, example here, uh, I believe that the parties agreed that the events shall not go past the hours of 11 p.m. on Sundays and 12 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. 12 p.m. A.M., correct. Midnight. Okay. Outdoor amplified music or speech is prohibited beyond 8 p.m. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Wow. Okay. They have also... Um, it, excuse me, that was outdoor amplified? Correct. But not indoor? Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, there were two other things that were uh, discussed. Uh, the timing of putting the fencing up was a concern. So I believe that um, it was agreed that the fence would be put up prior to any construction to the rest of the event, the, the CDP. Uh, I just clarified that just now. Um, for the house construction, um, since that's not part of the conditional use, I'm not seeing putting the fence up before the house construction. Okay, so the uh, neighbor is not nodding her head yes to that. Okay, uh, and um, insulating the barn was that a consideration or yes. Okay, so insulating the barn to reduce the uh, potential for noise um, extending beyond the confines of the building. Is that it? Okay, so uh, Mr. Cousins asked me to clarify the Saturday uh, times. The Saturday would, the event would end at midnight. Outdoor amplified music would cease at 8 p.m. Okay, so now we're, um, the board feels like we're complete with the information that we need. Is there anything further that you want to add? Either clarify with what was just read or anything else? I mean, I think we're, I think we agree with this. I mean, it, it's a it's a good compromise. Um, I mean, we have to respect our neighbors as well, and um, we understand that it's their privacy. So yes, we're willing to be able to work with the hours and um, figuring out a way to insulate the barn for the noise. Okay, well, that sounds great to me. So let's let's uh, we're going to close the the testimony portion of the meeting. We're going to open it, uh, open a voting meeting, and we're going to start with conditions. Let me just have a little sidebar with Mr. Elridge. Do you want me to read these and then change them? Those aren't the conditions. <coughs> Conditions uh, here. Uh, on page the 10. Yeah, page 10 of 27. There. And I have a number of suggestions. Wait, I understand. I might need to know that. If Posen doesn't get in on this, I'll be amazed. <laughs> <laughs> number one, the, the conditional use permit shall expire 10 years from the date of approval by the McHenry County Board. Number two, apply for highway access permit within three months of county board's approval of this conditional use permit. I guess that would be the petitioner shall apply. That would be an amendment. Yeah, yeah. Number three, petitioner shall apply for a stormwater <coughs> management permit and building permit 
for conversion of existing building within nine months of county board approval of the conditional use permit. Number four is all federal, state, and local laws shall be met. Are there any motions? Yes, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Proceed. Uh, uh, I would like to propose a condition that the music... Or if I had a microphone. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like to propose a condition that uh, all live music be performed inside the facility, that outside amplification uh, of the music uh, <clears throat> cease at 8 p.m. Uh, any day of the week. Let's, let's put some numbers on these. Uh, the first one would, would be number, uh, let's make it num a new number four because usually the place, the present number four is always the last one. Okay. So a new number four is that uh, all live music shall be performed inside the uh, uh, facility uh, and that outside amplification of music, whether live or uh, electronic, uh, shall end at 8 p.m. Uh, any day of the week. That would be number five. Yes. A uh, new number six is that uh, the hours of operation, all events shall end at uh, midnight Friday and Saturday and no later than 11 p.m. any other day of the week. Mr. Eldridge? Yes, sir. Would that not be item number five in white light of blue, the fact that number four was the live music 8 p.m.? Uh, yes, that would be number five. Uh, should should, should we, we vote on these individually or wait till I get no, through I all? I believe you said it was line item six. That's why I just oh, mentioned I'm, it. Oh, uh, I apologize. So, new line item five. Yeah, should we, Dave, do you want me to go through these all or should we vote on them one at a time? Well, are we done with them? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get done with them and then we'll Okay. Uh, I would... Uh, that before construction takes place on the facility uh, or uh, uh, any events take place, that an eight-foot privacy fence be erected uh, from on the western border of the property, uh, from the front of the property uh, to the uh, end of parking. Uh, the, that would be on the uh, uh, north end of the property. Uh, the part of the north end of the property where the parking lot is. Uh, that the number of people permitted for any event shall be the lesser of the number of people, uh, the safe occupancy as determined by the Department of Health for the facility or 250 people. In other words, if the Department of Health determines that fewer than 250 people may safely occupy the building, then that's the maximum. But if they determine that it's a larger number than 250, 250 is still the uh, 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 number of people. Um, next is that uh, their construction... What number? Um, I believe I'm at eight. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, nine is that uh, construction and operation of the facility shall conform to the site plan. And 10 is that uh, uh, the, bar the interior of the uh, uh, venue facility shall be insulated uh, with sound attenuating material. And that's all I have. I defer now to Mr. Cozen if he has some additional warnings. No, Mr. Chairman, the, um, I have no disagreement with the list. Uh, just uh, in terms of the qualifications, uh, in terms of the length of the fence on the west line, I'm wondering if Mr. Eldridge would consider limiting it to the 391 feet, uh, which would adjoin the uh, improved portion of it as opposed to 
go to the most uh, northern limits of the lot line, given that there will be uh, over a 700, 800 foot length fence. Yes, I'll, uh, uh, I'll agree to that. Uh, so that amendment to what number? Number six. Thank you. That's number six, and again, that would that information was taken from the submitted plan of survey uh, in the application. I'm just turning to the applicants. Does this seem to be correct? So uh, the pen site we had proposed was six foot, so it's going to go to eight foot. Just want to yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. One one little item. The the paperwork that we have has your last name as Perez. I'm sorry? The paperwork we have has your last name as Perez. Is it something different than that? No, it's Burnell. Burnell. Uh, Burnell Perez. Uh, my maiden is Perez. But for some reason, uh, my, the, they are, I've always used both of them. Okay. That's how they do it in Mexico. They always use both last names, the, the right, dads and the moms. So I get it, okay. Yeah. All right, I'll entertain a motion to approve the, ten, is it 10 of them? It's a total of 11. 11. Of 11 um, conditions. I will so move. Is there a second? I will second. Moved by um, Alder and seconded by um, Schnabel. 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 Conditions. All those. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do this by roll call. I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm calling the roll now. Uh, Eldridge. Yes. Smolensky. Yes. Uh, Cozen. Yes. successful 
and uh, desirable for McHenry County. And therefore, uh, with a strong urging to the petitioner uh, that they make sure that they do in fact follow the rules, I will support the petition. I'd like to say that I agree with Mr. Eldridge on what's been said. Uh, I would just like to make a comment um, for the uh, adjoining neighbor who has been very upset with this whole process. I'd just like to remind the public as a whole, um, property owners in general in the county have certain rights when it comes to requesting a conditional use permit. This would not, in some ways, it's not at all unlike um, in the early days when we would uh, have conditional uses come up for cell towers and everybody, of course, was opposed to those. They don't want that joining their property. And in recent years, we've had conditional uses for earth extraction, gravel pits that have wanted to expand and so forth. And of course, that may not be desirable uh, to a certain neighbor, group of neighbors. Unfortunately, a landowner does have some ability to request that. And we went through a year or so of construction of these um, um, large industrial, almost industrial scale solar farm projects that have been approved in many locations. This. Uh, uh, I live next to a tree nursery. The ownership has changed. The nursery operation has gotten a lot larger. It's actually just across the county line at DeKalb. There's nothing that I can do about it as a neighbor. Um, certain things we have to expect when we live in a, a rural area that are beyond our control. But I do, just in summation, say that I'm very familiar with the property. I know that Cars typically go 65, 70 miles an hour on the right of the road, so I, I understand the concerns from the other neighbor. Um, that's not going to change anytime soon. Um, I'm not going to get my near end on four lane highways. It's not going to happen there for quite some time, if in our lifetime. Um, be that as it may, I think overall that there are a lot of pluses available here with these types of facilities. We've given CUPs to in the past, people that want to build out dairy barns and so on and so forth. But typically, they encounter more roadblocks than they expect to when they're in the planning stage. So I'm sure whatever you do, by the time you jump through all the hoodles and hoops, it won't be as easy as you might think. But however, in the end, we're hoping that this will provide a benefit of some kind of a agritourism type thing like you would have at a, an apple orchard for exa example on Route 176 or a conditional use for a landscaping company where they're bringing in um, heavy trucks and so on and so forth employees etc. So in light of all of those facts uh, I'm very much inclined to support the petition and I will do so this time. Thank you. Uh, I think this sounds like a really great plan for this property. There is definitely a need for uh, event venue spaces like this in the county that's centrally located in Huntley. Huntley has uh, hotels and things like that to offer the public. I think it's great for uh, our tax base and I support the petition. Mr. Kurz. I'm in support of the project. Mr. Colson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there's an expression somewhat sanitized that the process of governing is, is never very pretty. And yet I, I believe we have seen an excellent example of McHenry County doing its utmost to balance the ish interests that are before us. I'm sure that the applicant has been before events in which each person at the table said theirs was the event that would otherwise make or break it. Uh, this application brings many um, wonderful things to that part and I have learned much more about the history and I wish them all success by beginning to say that I too support this uh, petition. I agree with everything that's been said so far. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this guy was blocking me. <laughs> Mr. Smolensky, I'm sorry. 
Okay. Um, I want to commend both the petitioner and the neighbor uh, for coming to a uh, an acceptable compromise that will allow this to go forward. Uh, I hope that spirit of cooperation extends into the future as well. I hope it does. Uh, I think this uh, will be an, uh, an excellent addition uh, for a reception area in the area. I live close by. I live in Del Webb in, in Huntley, so I know where you're at. Uh, so uh, with that in mind, I uh, will support the petition as well. I agree with everything that's been said so far. Um, I do commend the parties for getting out in the hallway and coming up with actually a lot more than I expected you to come up with. That was wonderful. So good luck to you in your business. Good luck to you in your home. And uh, that concludes the meeting. No, yep. we have to have a vote. Oh, we haven't taken the vote. No. <laughs> I'm anxious to get that out of here, I guess. Okay, here's the vote. Um, Beverly. Yes. Jers. Yes. Stone, yes. Um, Smolinski. Yes. Schnabel. Yes. Kozen. Yes. Eldridge. Yes. That's a seven to uh, vote in favor of recommending approval of the application. That concludes the hearing.